All right, thank you all for joining us for another Guest Chefs at Google Los Angeles. Uh, today I'm very happy to have Chef Sven, Sven Mehta from uh, Santa Monica's Casa Del Mar Hotel. Uh, Sven has worked all over the country. He's worked with some greats uh, like the late great Charlie Trotter, Bradley Ogden, as well as Michael Mina. Um, he was named Rising Star Chef by the Star Chefs Foundation. Um, originally hailing from Germany, now living That's in right. Marina Del Rey. Um, and he's here to del make a delicious seared shrimp and vegetable salad for us. So That's right. Thank you, guys. Hi. Thank you. Right. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Um, just to take all the confusion away, um, I'm the chef for Casa del Mar. On your little uh, you know, vouchers there on the recipes, it says uh, by the blue sea. Just to take this uh, right out there, uh, by the blue sea, it's, um, it's a group of restaurants, um, also in charge of the restaurants at Shadows on the Beach. Um, some of you guys are familiar with Casa del Mar and Shadows on the Beach. You guys been there, some of you? So at Shadows on the Beach, we have a few restaurants at Casa del Mar, obviously in Catch and the lobby, and we're in the progress of uh, building a new restaurant there, which will be a terraza, which will open in May. So we're very excited about that. But today we're talking about catch and um, um, some great you know, seafood and um, some great vegetables. And obviously with the location here, farmers markets all over the place every day of the week and the ocean. And so that's what we're trying to focus on today, some light seafood. And you guys, please, questions, keep going questions. Come up there, look at it. I will do a lot of stuff up here. So please walk up there if you want to see something a little bit closer and keep asking questions. Okay, so today we're doing a um, um, shaved vegetable salad and uh, some seared shrimp. So it sounds really simple. It's really simple. Uh, there's a couple of steps to it. Um, first of all, we will start with uh, making a little vinaigrette. So the, th the great thing about these, this recipe I picked today, you can change these things out. So right now it's citrus season. Uh, I picked some tangelos. Anybody knows what a tangelo is? It's a mixture of two citrus. Anybody knows? Tangelo. No, so it's a tangerine and a grapefruit. So you get the sweetness from the tangerine, but you also get the acid from, uh, from, a, from a grapefruit. Okay, so we're using that. And then we got these great Mayo lemons. So Mayo lemons, um, they're a little bit sweeter. They have a little bit more flavor than the regular lemon, just being just sour. There's a little bit something else to it, just, just the lemon flavor. So we're using these two, and then um, we just need a little bit of olive oil for that. So we're starting with the citrus right here. So I just, um, and you guys, I mean, you guys should come up here so you can see actually what's going on here. You guys want to come around, a couple left, a couple right. So I feel like I'm in the classroom otherwise here, yeah, not in the kitchen. Um, there we go, it's much more fun. So citrus right here, um, I just press some of that uh, juice here. Um, if you really like the citrus, you can also use the inside of them. Um, you get a little bit more of the tangelo juice. Okay, and then the Mayo lemon. What I do normally, I just roll the citrus so that it loosens up inside the flesh a little bit and you get more juice out of your citrus. You see the color is also a little bit different. It's a little bit more yellow actually than a regular lemon. All right, we get some of that. Okay, so we have the, the acid now. So now what we need now, it's our olive oil. So what we do normally, we just always add the olive oil slowly into the citrus. Uh, if you do a champagne vinaigrette, same thing. You take your oil and you slowly add it into your vinegar. Yeah, come on. New bottle. There it comes. So really important um, seasoning always. Everything gets seasoned. Um, and the next step is everything needs to be tasted. So a little salt and pepper. And then we get some tasting spoons here. And you want a great balance in that. You want a little bit of the acid. You want a little bit of the sweetness. Oh, we screwed, we screwed up the camera system now. Sorry. <laughs> and you want a great, you want a little bit of the, the, the richness of the olive oil. There we go. Okay, there we go. So a touch more, so we're good on that. Okay, that's our first step. So that was pretty simple. Simple vinaigrette, and you can exchange with anything you, you like. I mean, if you just want to use um, pomegranate juice, if it's like winter season, you same thing, you use some fresh pomegranate juice, you add some olive oil, or salt and pepper, really simple. Uh, basic ratio is normally like one to one, uh, if you use fresh juices and some olive oil. Okay, that's the first thing. The next thing what we want to do, we do a simple pickle. Um, what I will use for that, we use these uh, Fresno peppers. 
So you can do anything you want. Uh, the basic recipe is um, <coughs> champagne vinegar, sugar, and water. So what we do normally, we just use um, equal parts of sugar and water. And we bring that up to a boil. OK, let's see if this thing works. It does. OK, and then after this comes up to boil, I'm adding uh, the same amount I have in here. I add the same amount of vinegar to it. And that's your basic pickling liquid. You can use that to pickle radishes, peppers, onions, cauliflower, anything you want to do. It's always the same thing. You have a recipe on your little cards there. It's really simple. You make your liquid. You put your vegetables. You slice them thin. You add them in to it. Just bring it up to a boil. It cool down in the liquid. If you have this going here, it will take a second. Um, and you can use it with all kinds of vegetables. And you can hold them in that liquid for four weeks, pretty much. Just like you would li buy your pickles, you can hold them in the fridge. Same thing with your homemade pickles. It will hold for a long time because of the vinegar inside. While this comes up to a boil, let me just hold on. I will start um, getting these peppers cut. So the peppers here, I start them from the end here. I just cut the, the, the little end off here. And then we just want to slice them on the mandolin. Uh, kitchen tools. Favorite kitchen tools, mandolin is it's a great kitchen tool. You can buy these fancy metal gigantic things for hundreds of dollars. These are my favorite ones. Um, they're, they're great, adjustable. You can run them to a dishwasher. You know, they're, they're not as expensive and they work perfectly. They stay nice and sharp also. They come in a smaller size and they also come in this larger size. So it's a great kitchen utensil. Um, but they're sharp, so careful. Please don't, don't, <laughs> don't cut yourself on this. So this comes up to boil, but this comes up, I just add the vinegar to it. Okay, give a little stir around here. Let's make sure that the, all the sugar resolves. Okay. Okay, so that's these peppers. Um, make sure you kind of hold what I do here. If you see that, I hold onto the ball and the, the, the mandolin at the same time so it doesn't slide. And just slowly go back and forward and watch your fingers on that. Okay, same here. If you get more to the end, the slices get a little bit larger, uh, and you have a little bit more seeds, what do you want to do then? Just pick the seeds out, because the seeds are really like, spicy and don't have this much flavor. It just adds extra spice to it, so you don't really need, because you want the flavor of the peppers, really. So this is what it looks like. We have nice little slices here, if you see this. OK, we don't need all these. Let's put this over here for a second. There you go. So see, this liquid is coming up to a boil. What I do now, I just add these peppers to it. Since I have a lot of liquid, it boils right away. And that's it, and I just turn it off. If it turns off, it does. Perfect. Any questions at this point? You just need enough liquid to cover the vegetables. So like I probably can add another 10 peppers here probably because I have a lot of liquid. But you can reuse that liquid. It actually picks up more flavor if you use it the next time. So if you finished eating all your peppers, you can take that liquid, bring it up to a boil again and just slice fresh peppers into it and do it again. Actually, the flavor gets better every time you're using it. Okay, so we just reserve this here. All right, put them over here. Okay, let's start working on all our vegetables here. Okay, so what I have here about the shaved vegetable salad, uh, I picked a bunch of random stuff from the market. Baby carrots, radishes. Anybody knows what that is? Daikon, very good. I uh, use a lot in Asian cooking. I like it because you can eat it raw. It's not as spicy as a radish, but it has a great texture, especially in salads. Cucumber, red onions. Okay, so we're using all of these in our salad. Just a little space here. There we go. Do you go to the local farmers market? Uh, yeah, mostly on Wednesdays. This is the largest one in San downtown Santa Monica. Is that um, the best one? I think it's the. I don't know if it's the best one, but I think it's the largest one. It has the biggest selection, I think, of product. Uh, and it's, it's, it's all together on that day, so I don't have to go to smaller markets uh, throughout the week, actually. So it's, everybody is there, all the larger vendors, smaller vendors. So it's the best selection, I would think. All right. OK. So now let's start with our vegetables here. Let's start with uh, using these cucumbers. So I just cut the ends off. 
and you can change it out. I mean, and any vegetables. I mean, you can uh, you want to shave. Um, you can use fennel if you like fennel. You don't like daikon, use fennel instead. I mean, everything as long as you slice them really thin. You can use all kinds of uh, different vegetables. I mean, you even could use squash or butternut squash or something like that. It all works. So what I do here is just peel the outside. You just want to get the skin off here. Just the skin is a little bit bitter, uh, so you don't want to use that. Um, and again, if there's different cucumbers throughout the, at the farmer's market, uh, Right now, that's one that's the best tasting one. So what I do then, after I'm done peeling the skin, I just go over my ball here, and I just keep peeling these ribbons. So you end up with these, you see that, nice thin ribbons. And it's the same thing I would use the mandolin. It's just easier with the peeler, actually less dangerous. Um, so we just keep going here. We just keep turning until you get, you don't want to use the seeds, you just keep Turning the cucumber, and just keep peeling them down until we get enough for a salad. So I think that's a good amount. Okay, let's put this aside. Okay, next vegetable. Um, let's use the daikon. Same thing with the daikon. Um, I cut a nice big chunk of it. Again, start peeling the outside. Just get rid of the skin. Okay, and then same, let's get this nicely cleaned up here, okay. Um, same thing, so now you have this peeled side, now I go over my ball here and just keep peeling, again, these nice beautiful ribbons. And you just have to keep turning as the, you know, the the daikon is pretty white and your peeler is not as white. You just have to keep turning it to make sure you get the same size of ribbons. Okay, that's a good amount. It's about the same amount as the cucumber. Okay, next up, let's do um, baby carrots. So I have two different carrots here, uh, yellow and red. Um, you can use large carrots if you like. Like I said, you can use fennel. Um, you can even use cauliflower or something like that. If there's nice different colors of cauliflower at the farmer's market right now, it also works. Um, same process. I start peeling the outside. Let's cut that end a little bit. Go over here. And just keep peeling it down. Let's do the red ones too. All right, there we go. Who goes to the farmer's market, if you guys? Anybody goes on a regular basis? What's your favorite thing to buy there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's some great. I mean, right now, the, the time for greens is fantastic. There's great greens there. The citrus is really popping right now, so it's, it's very exciting. There's always something new. That's the best thing about it. Um, okay, we go carrots. There we go. See, that's a nice different colors too, because you get dark red car carrots, there's yellow, there's white. Just pick a different colors up and you just kind of peel them in there. Okay. And you can use it all the way down. Just keep peeling it until there's no carrot left, pretty much. I just stop right here because we don't have all day, and I know you guys want to go back to work or not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, carrots. Um, next thing is use some red onions. Um, again, you can use red onions, you can use shallots, you can use cipollini onions. I just like to put some sort of onion product into it. Um, it gives a nice little spice to it, a nice little kick. Um, just take the skin off here. There we go. Okay, so now here's the difference. It doesn't work with the peeler anymore. Now we have to use our mandolin. So I just cut the end a little bit off here so I have a nice flat surface here. Let's 
get this wiped off a little bit. All right, so onion right over here, hold it together like this. There we go. You see you have these nice, beautiful, thin little slices of red onions. Everybody always likes, oh, how do you do this with your knife? How sharp needs a knife to be? It's not, it's on, there's no knife, I don't use one knife at all. That's, that's the mandolin and the peeler. That's all you need for that. Okay, let's do some radishes. Um, I like radishes because there's a little spice to it. Uh, there's lots of different types. Uh, they have little yellow ones, red ones. Um, the English breakfast radish, that's what that is. Uh, it's kind of like a medium, medium uh, spicy radish. Uh, works great for salads like that. Let's just grab a nice one here. I already washed these vegetables, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, I actually did. <laughs> I, I prepared before you guys came here and actually washed them. Uh, OK, so slice the end off again. Mandolin, there you go. And then thin slices. And you got to make sure you keep looking at that. I can look away, but I wouldn't recommend doing that at home. OK, there we go. So you end up with these nice little slices here, nice and thin again. You see, end of the day, everything has the same thickness. So if you eat your salad, you have the, the, different, text, the different textures, different flavors, but everything is the same thickness. So it, the, sal the salad marinates really well like that. OK, what are we missing? We got this, we got radishes, carrots, cucumber. So we're good. So we got all these. So now, let me just clean this a little bit up here. All right, we're done with this. And that. So next. Uh, let's talk about shrimp. What I have here is a, it's called a blue prawn. That's what it looks like. So when it comes to shrimp, um, there's a lot of different types of shrimp obviously around. Some good ones and some not so good ones. Um, um, I prefer to buy shrimp in, in, inside the shell, uh, not peeled, because uh, you have more possibilities in how you want to use them. Um, same as with meat. If you cook meat on the bone, there's more flavor to it. A bone and ribeye always tastes as more flavor than a bone, less ribeye. Same comes to seafood. If you cook a whole fish, there's more flavor to a whole fish because you're cooking it on the bone than a fillet of fish. The same goes with shrimp and lobster and all the other crustaceans. So cooking a shrimp inside the shell uh, in some applications has much more flavor. You see, like if there's live spot prawns and things like that, you just cut them in half. That's what we do at the restaurant. You just split this whole shrimp, put them on a grill, salt and pepper, olive oil, and you serve them in the shell because there's a lot of flavor to that. Now, for our application today, since we're just doing a simple salad, you don't want to start peeling the shrimp with your salad, so it's kind of getting messy. So what we did here, we just peeled them um, and cut them in half pretty much like this. So we just get this pen going here. All right, see so it works. Stanley, are you catching up? Are you ready to go? Because these people are hungry, okay? So <laughs> you better be ready. Okay, so you get this nice and hot. Um, really simple, just a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. Uh, what I do normally, I just season, the, season my uh, meat or fish in a separate bowl instead of just putting too much oil inside. You don't, the balance is better if you season the things in the pan and then put, uh, season it in a separate pan and then put it in the frying pan so you don't end up with lots of excess uh, oil. Okay, there we go. Salt and pepper. Salt, um, we really like using sea salt. Um, much more flavor. Um, uh, it's, it's a little bit healthier, too. And you know, the nice thing is that it has a nice little texture to it, too, especially if you finish things, uh, finish meat, finish fish. It has a nice little crunch to it, and it has much more you know, minerality and flavor than, than just regular kosher salt. Uh, and then pepper. Um, we always use pepper mills at the restaurant because uh, it's fresh ground. Instead of just buying you know, pepper ground already, it's nice to have a pepper mill. Uh, what we do normally, we toast the peppercorns. Uh, what it does, uh, it brings a little bit more flavor out of the spices. So a lot of the spices, when you're, especially in Asian cooking too, you always toast the spices before you use them. Before you use them. So the same we do with the peppercorns. Just a little pan, overheat, uh, toast the peppercorns, and then put them into the pepper meal. So it's much more flavor out of the peppercorns. OK, we'll season that. I have a question about oil. So you yeah. used olive oil. I know that some people use more neutral oils. But is the olive oil flavor going to stay with the shrimp after it's cooked? It, it stays a little bit in there. I think it, feel, it, it fits the concept that we are, because we are, so, um, yeah, so the olive oil, it's, the question was to, why are you using olive oil? Um, so I really like using olive oil for things like that because it goes with the salad. 
Um, if I just want to cook something separately, but had nothing to do with this, I may use grapeseed oil. If I need to fry something really hot, you use uh, like a peanut oil or something like that. Um, for this application, where I don't use a really high heat, I just want to have a little bit caramelization on the outside and then adding it to a salad, and the salad also will have olive oil. I think it fits better uh, using olive oil in that application. This pan should be good, so let's get these in here. So when it comes to cooking, shrimp, meat, anything like that, the worst thing can happen is that your pan is really too hot or too cold. And you can hear it normally on the sound of your pan if it starts to explode and um, uh, getting really, really loud. It just, that, that, that when you put this meat in the, in the pan, it means your pan is too hot. If nothing happens and you can't hear anything, that means your pan is probably too low on heat. Uh, so you want to have a little sound of it. So you see, like, I just, just turn this down a little bit. I started with a little bit higher heat to get a C on it. And now I turn the heat down. Let's see if I figure out the stove. I do. There we go. If it smokes too much, then uh, you can add a touch more oil. Uh, just what, what it does pretty much is cooling the, cooling the pan down. And, and don't be scared, like, you can take the pan off. I don't need heat right now. Obviously, the pan is hot, so I just, I just take it aside. You, you see the shrimp curls up. Um, in this application, it doesn't matter. In some other applications, you see sometimes what they do with the shrimp, they put skewers inside, like a little wooden skewer or with whole lobster. They put skewers inside so the tail stays straight. It's only if you want to have a perfect plate, something like that. This application, maybe just doing the salad, the shrimp like that is perfectly fine. Uh, let me just flip these over again. Uh, the next thing you want to keep an eye on, um, there's nothing worse than overcooked uh, meat, fish. Um, I know people are always scared to like undercook it and don't want to have it raw, but I think it's much better just take one piece and cut it in half and look at it and, and check if it's cooked or not cooked instead of just cooking it and be safe and add another minute, another minute. The next thing you know, it's just dry and you can't go back from this point. So you always want to just kind of stop it and say, hey, is it done or not? So just take one piece, cut it in half, look at it. If it's done, it's done. If not, just put it back in a pen for another minute or two. So that's these are pretty much done. Let's turn the thing off. Okay. Okay, just push them aside. There we go. All right. So let's put our salad together. All right. First, I have the vegetables here. Let's get them all in here. Okay. Then our dressing. And the ratio normally is about a tablespoon per serving of a salad uh, as, a, as a basic uh, recipe. So that's, I use a teaspoon, so I use a little bit more here. There we go, that's good. Um, again, we mix it around a little bit. And then, very important, you want to taste it. So I just take a little piece here. And then um, this needs a touch more salt. OK. OK. Start putting it together. Stanley, are you ready over there? I'm going, as, I'm going slow for you. OK. So salad right in the middle. That's a nice, fresh summer dish um, with the citrus. But like I said, you can serve this in the winter. Use butternut squash and pomegranate vinaigrette. And now you have a great winter salad, too. Um, let's do um, some of the pickles on top here. Great kitchen tool, by the way. I don't know if I said that already. Every chef's new favorite. I know it didn't exist for 10 years ago, but now everybody has one. Um, it's the tweezer. So you can do stirring, you can take things out, you use it for frying, turning over your steaks. Um, I use it at home for barbecue, they do them in small, large, anything. It's just the perfect kitchen tool, by the way. Um, shrimp. OK. And then uh, let's something nice and fresh. Let's add a little bit of cilantro leaves. Um, 
Yeah, they recently had nice uh, cilantro flowers at the farmer's market. Unfortunately, we couldn't get them anymore. But like I said, you can exchange these things. I mean, if you cilantro flowers, arugula flowers, um, if you want a more substantial salad, you actually could add a little bit of arugula to your vegetables too and make it more like a compost salad too. So we added some cilantro here. And then uh, just to finish, we can just put a little bit more vinaigrette on top, just like that. And that's it, we have a nice fresh salad. Now, for anybody who wants it, a little bit more kick to it, because these are more like sweet and sour. There's a little spice to it, but not a lot. Um, at the restaurant, what you use sometimes too, is like this pepper here, it's called an espelette. Uh, it's a Spanish uh, pepper. Um, has a little bit more citrusy notes and a little more flavor to it than just regular chili flakes, for example. But this gives a nice little kick. So if you like food a little bit more spicy, a nice little, uh, nice little spicy pepper on top, and you can finish your dish like that too. That's it, really simple. Was it difficult? No? Easy? Fairly easy, no? Any questions? Anything else? No? No? Okay, who comes back now and does the same again? Anybody wants to do this, the whole dish again? No? 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 All right. Let's, uh, if you have some plates ready for you guys here, let's, let's try it. And if you have any more questions, let me know. So like roast the peppercorns before you put it in the milk? Uh-huh. Just, just, just toast, just toast them, yeah. You have to do this just before you use it, or can you just do no, it once yeah. and then keep it for like yeah. months? Not, not months, but I mean, I, we, I refill it like once a week normally, we go through it, but I mean, you don't have to fill your peppermint all the way. Okay. You can just toast like a handful and put them inside your mill, and it's enough for like two weeks or three weeks, okay. and then, you know, just don't fill the peppermint all the way. Okay. But it, it, you get much more flavor out of them. Um, this shrimp, it's from um, Santa Monica Seafood. There's a store here, there's a store right here in Santa Monica. Um, this one, it's a frozen shrimp. The thing is, with shrimp, it's always like, you know, getting fresh shrimp. A lot of supermarkets, it says fresh shrimp, but if you read the small print, it says previous, previous frozen. So it's, a lot, it's better to buy some of this one. It's a sustainable shrimp, and it's, it gets frozen right on the boat. So it's been frozen the whole time. It's not like frozen and defrosted, so it's really consistent that way. Uh, a lot of chefs going that direction now because it's really hard to get really fresh shrimp, yeah, which was fresh don't. from the catch. We get some of them, but you only get it once a week or every second week, so it really depends on the weather. So a lot of chefs can't, can't depend on that if you have a restaurant where you have, need to have a consistent product. But that's a really good shrimp. Um, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's soft and has different applications. You can fry it, you can sear it or grill it, and it always stays kind of moist. What do you think the biggest challenge? Um, biggest, um, I think first you have to pick good product. I think, you know, like we just talked about the shrimp, um, using the right product, good product, um, and just kind of handling it right. Make sure, I mean, don't leave it three days in your fridge before you cook it. No, you want to make sure it stays fresh. I mean, and then just don't overcook it, I think. And make sure you season it well. I think that's pretty much a secret. And, you know, in our restaurant at Catch too, I mean, we're using a lot of different seafoods. The main role is like make sure the stuff stays fresh and you know and keep focus on the cooking techniques and make sure that it's not, it's not overcooking. You want to you don't want to serve overpowering things with, with your seafood just you know like like this because it highlights the seafood. Mm -hmm. you now if you if you do like really heavy risottos with a really delicate piece of fish like what's the point you know you, you don't taste the fish anymore. You come across unusual things at the farmers market. And you think, How am I going to use this? Yeah, sometimes. Um, there's some tropical fruit, something like, I, I have no idea what it is. I just take one and then just Google it and then, uh, <laughs> and then find out about it. And then just kind of try it out if you like it or don't. Yeah. But that's what's fun about the farmer's market here because there are these, there are, there are these farmers who have stuff you only see for two weeks out of the year or something like that, yeah, which is exciting, yeah. Are there any significant differences? Um, it's, it's the same thing because it just, you know, the preparation is exactly the same. You just made a bigger batch. Obviously, you, you shaved all the vegetables separate, so you had a bowl of shaved radishes and a bowl of shaved uh, carrots and things like that. And depends how many people you just saw. Mix it all in one big salad. Uh, make the salad, and then instead of seeing four pieces of shrimp, you see you know, 20 pieces of shrimp. If you're entertaining, how, how far ahead of time can you like, maybe slice the vegetables? And I guess you simple it. This vegetable you can slice them the day before. Um, some vegetables you can keep in, in water. Um, some vegetables you just put a moist uh, paper towel on top to so make sure they don't dry out. Uh, like the cucumber and the radish, just stay nice if you put them in a little bit cold water. Uh, the radishes, normally I, I like to just put a paper towel on top so you don't lose the, the, the spiciness of them. 
But you can prep that a day ahead. You have to vinaigrette down a day ahead. The pickles, like I said, you can make them two weeks ahead. Um, so you only have to really mix it all together and sear the shrimp. So what's that last to call again in Spanish? This, uh, it's called espelette. Espelette. Yeah, espelette. If you, if you just want to try a little bit here, just to see. Yeah, I'm going to ask a little bit more on it, a bit more of the sense of it. Yeah. Yeah, but also if you want to just just try a little bit, so you can you can see it, it's actually there's there's more notes to it than just spice. You know, there's mm. there's a little citrus. There has a lot of different Are components to it. Um, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Whole Foods probably yeah. has it or somebody like that. Yeah. Any question? Anything else? Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming, and hope to see you soon at the restaurant. Thank you. Thanks a lot.